my name is Eckhart, the German butcher, also known as the professional home sausage maker. Now I want to show how I clean or how I take the meat or the fat off the ribcage. But first I want to talk about this. We butchered this yesterday and we cut the meat down yesterday. We always cut the ribcage down when the deer is hanging. But there's a lot of meat in between the ribs that you may miss here and there a little. So I cleaned it up and I want to show how much meat I got from that. If you see, because this is not cleaned yet, but there's so much meat off the rib cage. If you don't do it, you throw it away. The first thing you do, cut the loin out once you have the piece laying there and uh, you start back here and just pull on it I cut it out already that's really the only good piece of meat in this part the rest will all go into hamburger but I want to show you a little bit how I do it maybe it's easier for you later so I turn that piece around as you see this was my shot a lot of blood where the shoulder blade was but I don't worry about it right now all I want to pull this meat off here first I put a knife there so it stays where it is and just peel it off this is the meat that normally stays on the skin if you don't skin it right so I just go along and take this off like that and if you see a hair, take take it away. This is a piece of meat that you normally don't get if you skin it wrong. Sure, it's not, not worth much, but it's hamburger meat. Now I clean up here a little bit, the fat off. There. And now we'll try to get this muscle off. That means I take it off muscle by muscle. That looks terrible, don't you think so? A lot of people would just throw it away. But see what happened. Since I have this in my hand, I'm going to show this right away. The meat is always in between the meat. It's not on the inside the meat. So all you do is you go and cut this off. That's a good piece of meat. If you think there's a little bit too much blood out for you, lay it in cold water. And it will soak the rest off. Since I have it laying that way, I want to take this muscle out right away. See this all in layers. Once you cut it in half, you don't have to hold muscle anymore. If you look a little closer, cut a little meat, blood off, good meat. Now what the hell do I do with this? Let's look from the other side. Now I want to cut this, there's the leftover from the loin, the fat part. I want that off. And this can go. And now I pull this muscle off here. Yep, there's some hair on it. Uh huh. Not the way I wanted it. This goes along here. The 
is a small muscle, but it's meat. Now comes this one. Now it becomes a little more difficult. The muscles are not distinctive like before. So I want to cut this one off yet. I have no idea what they call it in in English, in the, the American butcher. I never was a butcher in America. Maybe now we go to pieces. Uh -huh. But I guess you get the drift. That's way how I cut the, the meat off or get the fat off the meat. I want to show you how I handle the bloody part. As you see there is, uh, like I said before, the blood is never in the meat, it's in between the meat. People would just throw this away. Now I would think this is now garbage. Even so there's a little muscle underneath here, but it is so thin that's not worth picking. Let's see what we come up with. See as you see if you dump it on the, the bloody on the table it kind of sticks to the table. And if you want to keep that you can harvest a little bit meat there yet too. I think that's enough on this. That is waste. Most of it would have been waste anyhow because not a good meat there. And here you cut the fat off. And there's on this side just the tip from a shoulder blade in. Because that you want to cut out. And that's a good piece of meat. I cleaned my table a little so it looks a little better. Now I want to cut the uh, tenons off the muscle here. You can call it silver skin, but it really is a, is a tenons. Anywhere you can. Sometimes you get a little more out of one piece and sometimes not. Put a knife underneath it. Better have to go in small pieces, then you don't get so much meat on it. To me, that is the best meat from a whole deer. No matter how old it is, it's always is tender. Now I have my loin nice cleaned up. As you see I cut everything off, even the loose meat here. There's one ten inch in here. I leave that in, otherwise I have to cut too much off. So what I do with this now. My most favorite thing I do with this, I smoke it. I cure it in salt water for about a week and then cold smoke it a certain way. To me that is the best 
meat I can get from a deer. But a lot of people do other things with it. For example, what we do sometimes, we will take it like this, put spices on, whatever your flavor is, and then brown it in butter from all four sides, and keep it warm in the oven, and make a wine gravy out of it. Or cook patties, bread them like schnitzel, and fry it in the pan. Or some people put them on the grill, which we don't do. Now this uh, silver skin or the tenants, you could put in hamburger meat. Some people say to cut. I don't. But I've not looked that close. If a little bit on, there's no problems. There's a little meat on yet. No. This is for the animals. And here there's a piece, there's a tenant in there, I try to cut that out too. That's all the waste meat from the loin. Now I clean this, like I said before, that's where the lot of blood was on. Whenever you see it here, grab it. Now comes the trick to it. If you have too many hairs on it and you can't handle it, lay it in running water and move the meat once in a while. All the hairs will flow to the top. And you have later on no hair in the meat anymore. Sometimes if the meat is too thin or the fat on both sides, I cut stripes and then I cut the meat off, like here now. If it's in one piece, you can get it there to good. There we go. See here? I make two pieces out of it. This is on top. And this here comes. It looks so easy sometimes. It's probably for you not that easy because you're not where not you butcher before. This piece is interesting, has a lot of blood on it. So if it's a little more. <coughs> now I cleaned out the meat from the rib cage. Now I came to the what I cut off the rib cage when I Clean, cut the meat off. I should say this, as you see here, the meat looks nice and clean. It's usable, but if it's ugly or dirty, you don't want to use it, then you don't do that. So what I do here, I look for blood or a little piece of fat. Like this. Cut off a little bit. Now with just a little fat at the end, and here I cut off. Since there was not very fat, there's no fat on here, so we don't worry about it. If you order an animal and there's a lot of fat on, you may have to cut that too. So that's where you go, 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 this way you gotta go through the pile. Now I want to 
to show quick how I uh, cut the neck bone. This the neck, we always cut the neck off so we can clean it easy on the table. We put the, uh, where the pipe, the air pipe goes through to the bottom and just cut in the center. Of course, before you start, you try to get all the hairs off, especially on the neck, there's the most hair on you think, can think of. Yes, um, And then you cut the meat down on the bone. Just keep cutting the bonus in the center, as you know, the lot of in and out, but we don't worry about it, we just cut along it. Then you turn around a little and do this here. That's one side. And now we go to the other side. There's the bone. Now you can go and pick some more meat off if you want to. But if you want to cook the bone, make your bone young out of it, that's the right bone to use. This is very hard to do, so I put, cut a little bit more off, but I leave the rest on. I make a soup out of it. Now I want to trim the neck meat. There's always a tendons in the back. As you see here, this got to go. This is a young meat, young animal, and there was not much fat on. There's not much to trim on this. There's always where the big artery goes in here. There's almost fat around it. You don't want that fat on there. There's a little more here. Ah, and more here. That's it. There's a big piece of fat on this side. The other side don't have it because it stayed on the shoulder. And this I just cut up for hamburger. The only thing what's left now is to, to pack the meat that we use later on as a host or whatever. I got here the two fillets. It's, I, I wrap it saran wrap. I just lay it in, pull the air out, and twist it a few times. And I do it about four or five times. And before the last round, I put my name on. This was. Uh, one, one, fourteen. One is the number one. Fillets, number one on my list. I have a list what I have. And fourteen is the year. Then I roll it one more time and cut it. This is how I pack my venison. I 
want to show this real quick. I had from a loin, one side I left a little 10 inch in, so it was a little bigger. And the other side I cut it off, so it was not too bad either, but I figured I'd leave it like this. I pack them individually, so I always can't take two out if I need more than one. Wrap it. Then I put my name on, that means one. The line is two, fourteen. Maybe I should explain that one more time. I have a list here where for years I use the same numbers, so I always can find that meat. I know when it's been shot, who shot it, and what kind of cut it is. So that's the last one. If you smoke, you're most of the time take out more than one, but if you uh, want to roast, you have a few people, one is enough. One, two, fourteen. Then I kind of meet all together in one time. Now I got all my rolls packed away. I will put all the meat from the front, from the hindquarter, from the shoulder, from the rib cage together and grind it. But I will put that on a different movie. So this is the end of this movie. I hope you watch the others. Weidmann's Heil.